All right, today we're out at a, a customer shop looking at a 2015 Volkswagen um, Beetle with a 1.8 liter turbo. Um, and the, uh, the issue with this vehicle is it cranks but doesn't start. So this is pretty much what it does here. Cranks, doesn't start, doesn't, uh, doesn't even try to, to fire here. So um, I think what we're gonna do first is just hook the scan tool up and see if we can uh, See if we can see anything, any codes or anything like that uh, that might point us here. Now according to the uh, the owner of this vehicle, he just went out one day and uh, went to go fire the thing up and uh, just wouldn't start, just cranked, didn't do anything. Uh, was driving it the day before, no issue, and uh, yeah, next morning went out, just cranked, wouldn't start. Uh, now this one's the uh, CPKA CP, CP uh, 1.8 liter um, turbo. I believe this is a GDI car. No, oh, looks like it's a 2016, not a 15, but... Alright, I'm going to control unit. We'll just hook up to the um, ECM, see if we have anything. Okay, so we've got a O2 sensor code, fuel pressure regulator code. Um, those are both history codes and data bus error value received codes. So, um, those two history codes, I think we'll just ignore those for now. Um, they probably had some stuff unplugged on this thing trying to uh, uh, diagnose it. Um, that data bus error value code, um, should keep that in the back of our minds for now, but I wouldn't worry too, too much about that one because we can still talk to the ECM and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think it's a communication issue, uh, but let's just go over and look at some data here and see if we can see anything kind of weird or anything that would indicate that this thing's got a sensor issue or... I think they allow you to monitor fuel pressure too, so let's let's have a look at that as well, make sure we've got uh, decent fuel pressure. Okay, so we just got some very basic data on the screen here. Just I'm just really interested in looking at uh, fuel pressure. I looked at all the other data pids, um, and nothing really looked out of the ordinary. Um, mass airflow looked fine. All the five volt uh, circuits or all the five volt sensors they uh, they appeared to be fine. Didn't appear to be like a short of five volts or anything like that. Um, so just want to have a look at what this thing's cranking at. See if we have a, an engine speed input, uh, and then just see what. Um, see what our fuel pressure is like. Uh, now I couldn't find a low fuel pressure actual value but the um, uh, it's kind of kind of annoying how Volkswagen does this. They have some PIDs in kilopascals, other PIDs in bars, so um, we'll just have to do a little bit of a conversion here but we'll just crank it over and see what the uh, see what the data says here. Okay so Looks like it's getting about nine to ten thousand kPa of power, but it appears to be getting enough fuel pressure to uh, to run. Because these things, even though they're GDI, they should still start and idle on um, on low pressure fuel, uh, like the the uh, the low pressure created by the in tank pump. Um, so I don't think we have a fuel pressure issue. Um, I actually didn't notice. See if we had, yeah, we do have a cranking RPM speed as well. So. Um, looks like we got a crank signal, but I think that's where we're going to go next. We're going to have to uh, do cam and crank on this on this thing. Uh, and just make sure it's lined up properly, make sure the signals look good. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that next. Alright, so we've got all our mess of wires hooked up here. The crank sensors accessed from underneath the vehicle. Our cam sensors up here. Um, only have the one, the exhaust cam isn't monitored on these um, for some reason. Uh, so we've got our Pico hooked up here and we'll just hop in the vehicle. Get the scope running and uh, see what it looks like. I'll switch over to a, uh, a better view here. I'll uh, do a screen recording of the scope just so it's uh, easier to see. Okay, so we have our Pico scope hooked up here, and our uh, green trace is our cam sensor, blue trace is our crank sensor. Um, we got about one second per division on the screen here and uh, voltage scale of uh, 10 volts. So I'm just going to crank this thing over and see what we got. Um, I'm just going to wait till it's done this page here and give her a crank. Okay. Okay, so we do have a good cam and crank signal here, so...
I don't see anything missing. That staticky stuff there, that's not really anything to worry about. Um, but I don't see anything missing, no dropouts. Um, these spaces here in the crank sensor where I kind of go wide and then narrow. Um, that's just, I think that's just because of uh, variations in, uh, in engine speed, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. Um, but what I have done here is um, I've got a uh, known good pattern for uh, one of these 1.8 liter turbo, but uh, the first red pulse here, the first skinny red pulse, um, if you count the, um, the crank sensor pulses um, from the trailing end of the first red pulse, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, little blue pulses there. And if you go back to our screen, I'll just zoom in here on this section here. I'll use the cursor. All right, so now we've got our degree cursors up there. We'll just zoom in here. There are smaller ones, so we'll start here on the first pulse, and we'll go here on the second, or on the trailing edge of the uh, green pulse. So, uh, we're sitting at about uh, 22 degrees here. Um, now if we just move this cursor over eight uh, crank pulses, which is where it should be lining up. One, two, sorry, we'll start here. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're sitting at about 31 degrees, so. We just move this over. It appears to be out uh, about 10, 11 degrees. Um, I'm not sure if that's enough on this for it to um, for it to cut coil and injectors and stuff like that. So I think what we're going to have to do next is uh, uh, get rid of the cam and crank here. We know it's it's a little bit out of time here, um, but we're going to have to see if it's firing the coils and injectors. Um, See if it's disabling one of those, um, or if it doesn't know when to fire them because it's out of time. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do next. We're just gonna put uh, cam and crank on the screen, um, and see if the sorry, not cam and crank. We're gonna put uh, coil and injectors on the screen, and I may do a uh, in cylinder as well, just so we can see where the uh, coils and injectors are firing relative to compression. So um, yeah, we'll do that on the next uh, scope shot here. Um, Injectors, coils, and in cylinder. All right, now we have our uh, in cylinder compression uh, tester here. In cylinder one, um, we have our uh, green trace on our um, coil command there, uh, and then we have our current probe on the uh, injector number one uh, wiring. So. funky sounding window up and we will restart this I'll uh, pop this up on the uh, screen recording okay now we're just gonna try cranking this thing over and see what happens So right off the bat, I can see that our compression is very, uh, very uneven. Um, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, now that's not, uh, all right. Well, that's interesting. So we have our, um, our green trace here is our, um, here, I'll move the cursor so we can see what I'm talking about here. Our green trace here is our coil command. Um, and our red trace here is our uh, injector. Uh, current so the injector and the coil is firing um, But you can see here. It's only firing on every other compression stroke Except this isn't a compression stroke um, this is uh, 
this is a uh, this is where the exhaust stroke should be. So um, let's just get the cursors out here. That's what it looks like anyways, because I don't see any other way um, of how it would only be firing the uh, injectors and coils on every other compression stroke. I mean, that's, I don't even know how that would be feasible or how that would be possible. So um, let's just see if we can confirm here that this is, in fact, the uh, exhaust stroke. Uh, So if we go from this to this here, from peak to peak, thereabouts, um, actually let me, yeah, so if we go to this peak here, um, it shows about, uh, I don't know if you've seen that bottom right hand corner, there's an RPM, um, uh, data PID there. Um, this thing will actually tell you how fast the heavy engine's cranking over based on this, um, uh, based on the uh, degree cursors here. So um, if we go peak to peak here, it's saying it's uh, uh, cranking at about 200 RPM. And I don't know if you could hear this thing. I guess the battery charger shut off, but the uh, the uh, starter started rolling over pretty slow. So it definitely was not rolling over at uh, 200 RPM. So let me just move this cursor over to this side. And that, that sounds more about right about 100 rpm um if this was a full battery it might be rotating at like 150 170 rpm um and if we brought it back over here it probably would have been higher than 200 but yeah this thing's just rolling over kind of slow so um there's something catastrophic has happened inside this engine because we're building about 120 ish psi on the exhaust stroke let's just pull this down and see yeah about 117 psi on the exhaust stroke and uh, 130-ish on the actual compression stroke. So they're going to have to take this thing apart and see exactly what failed. Um, now, I'm not sure if the... You know, it's not possible for the chain to have snapped because we're still um, getting a cam signal. If the chain snapped, there wouldn't be any cam signal. Um, and I don't think the exhaust cam has snapped because if it's snapped, then we wouldn't be getting any fuel pressure. So I'm not really sure what happened in this thing. Um, I'm suspecting all other cylinders look this way because I, I can't imagine it would stop running just because one um, cam lobe got worn down or something like that. Or, or I'm not really sure what happened here, so we'll have to get them to take it apart and see if they can send us some pictures or videos of what they found, because that'll be uh, that'll be interesting to see. But yeah, this, this thing's going to have to be torn down to see exactly what's wrong with it. Hey everybody, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to uh, hit the subscribe button so you subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on social media shown on the screen here. And if you want uh, more access to more in-depth training videos, uh, more technical, longer, and subject-specific, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks.